Hey guys. Today I want to take a little bit and talk about a, a real issue that I don't know if it needs to be discussed, but it's something I've experienced recently and I assume that you know others out there have experienced it as well. But that is getting st stuck on a project. And I don't mean stuck as in stumped, like uh, you don't know how to proceed. It's more like um, transfixed, to being too transfixed on the wrong part of a project, I guess. And I guess more, more really, trying to force a project to become something that I guess it doesn't want to be, or trying to, I guess, preventing a project from flowing and developing naturally. And that's something that I'm guilty of, and it's really hard to explain, so I guess we'll just jump right into it. Uh, people who follow me on Instagram would recognize this as being kind of a on-again, off-again project I've been working on. And you'd notice that it's missing the sledge fire barrel and uh, inverted magnets underneath. And the reason for that is, well, for one, I just I couldn't make it work the way I wanted it to. And I found out I was trying to make it, tr trying to, to tr trying to want to make it work, I guess. And the story with this build originally was it was supposed to be kind of a sister blaster to the Hellhound where the Hellhound is kind of a, a, you know, dark, nefarious-sounding thing. This was supposed to be kind of a equal opposite to the Hellhound. And the, the base idea of the uh, Demolisher and the Stampede was a good sound idea, but I wanted a semi-automatic flywheel to match the Hellhound, and I wanted a some kind of underbarreled mega something to kind of, there again, be kind of the equal equal feature. But I didn't want to do another Baron because I wanted it to be a really distinct, different blaster. And so I played with a couple ideas. I originally tried a a Vagabond underneath, and that just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. It was a little, a little more bulky than I wanted it to be. And I got to where I was really close with the Magnus, but aesthetically I just I couldn't make it work. And I, I tried I tried different things, and I've shelved this blaster several times. You know, you put it back in the box and you move on to something else, and you pull it out and go, <sighs> and then you put it back in the box. And that kind of brings it to where this blaster is at this point. The thing that made me rethink things was a conversation I had with some friends regarding this. You'll notice this doesn't look any different than it did last time you saw it in the video. That is... After, after I realized I couldn't get this done in time for the competition, I had kind of a, a tipping point, so to speak, I guess, where one of, one, of the, one of the qualifications for the Emerged Elite class that I was competing in with Merge Masters was that you had to have at least, uh, your, you had to have a, a shotgun firing mode of some kind. And the idea with that stipulation was to uh, inspire creativity and, and make it a little more challenging for the more experienced contenders. And it almost made me drop out of the competition because I had a picture in my mind. I'd heard that Merge Masters was going to be having its its second go around. And I had a picture in my head of what I wanted to build. And then when the stipulation came out, hey, you have to have some kind of secondary mode, I didn't want to compromise the original picture I had. And so I had kind of the basic picture for the Hellhound, or the Hell, ha, Jackal, got a roll at the times. The original picture in my head was the kind of a grip swap Straven with the extended magwell and the long shot front gun, but the original plan was to have this be a lot shorter and a lot tidier and a lot uh, sleeker looking, and that would also move the magwell up and in turn make the whole blaster itself a lot sleeker looking. But when I found out I had to put some kind of shotgun feature of some kind on there. The smallest thing I could think of, because I ended up sizing up a couple different underbarreled setups, and in order to have the a sizable uh, plunger tube and the rod and the spring and everything like that, it would have made me push this a lot further forward than I wanted to. And so I thought, okay, air tank's going to be the easy, easiest way to do that. Well, I was able to highly modify an XBZ tank in order to fit, but then in order to get a pump to fit, I would have been trying to compromise something else entirely. So that's when I rested on the um, compressor idea. And while I got a compressor, 
it didn't really fit in the back as well as I was hoping. And I just, uh, right about the time I was trying to fit the compressors when the, com the competition uh, deadline came up and I realized I wasn't going to be able to make it work. And so I was, I was stuck with, with the decision to go on with the, with the, um, compressor thing that I was never really totally excited about. I mean, the compressor, the onboard compressor with the air tank was kind of a, uh, kind of basically trying, okay, I, I have qualifications to meet, and this was the, not necessarily the simplest, but the, I guess, most compact way of making it happen. And so without having some kind of external pump hanging out. And so now that I didn't have that stipulation, the idea in my head was, okay, if I already had, I already planned everything around having the the air tank up front and a compressor of some kind. So if I forego the idea of you know I'm, you know because I want I wanted to finish this build. I, that's a build I was pretty excited about and everything. But if I'm not doing the compressor, if I avoid that whole situation, because that would have been a lot more, I guess, involved into something I wasn't passionate about, which isn't really make me feel good. And so. I still had the area up front where there was, you know, the tank, and I'd already cut out the front to fit the three dart absolver up front. And so I, you know, set this in the project box, and I looked at it several times and thought, I don't really want to do the compressor thing. So, because if I eliminate the compressor thing, then I have this whole void up front that I'm not using. So if I'm not using this whole area up here, I also don't want to cut away everything that I've already done up here because the body works almost complete in order to move the the bottom up and kind of condense everything and make it look nicer. So I had kind of the moral decision of do I want to undo everything that had been done or just start over? And I actually talked to some people in the community seriously about selling this as is, as kind of a, hey, do you want to pick up my project where I left off? I was that close to just abandoning it and starting over, just because of that not being able to let go of the compressor thing that was just bugging me, because it was like, do I, do I do the compressor that I'm not excited about and I really honestly didn't want to do? I wanted to just have a, a fancy looking blaster that just had a single firing mode, and I was totally cool with that. So. I don't know if, if somebody said it or if, if it was just a thought that came to me. You to repurpose this area up front instead of just leaving it empty or whatever. Because, I mean, if I didn't have the stock, I could have used that for like a battery storage or something weird like that. But I already have plenty of room for battery storage and all that. So, in order to utilize this area up front and make it more worthwhile and practical, then I have elected to use the front here and add a tact light of some kind and perhaps a laser pointer of something like that. Not necessarily something that I really originally wanted to do, but given the choice between something that might be kind of fun to do versus something that honestly I wasn't passionate about. I, I don't really remember at any point being passionate about the compressor thing. It was just kind of a, well that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. And I didn't want to build this in a way that I would not be happy with in the end. Or bu build something that, I don't know, I, I just, I would rather change gears a little bit and build something different than I had originally intended that I would be happy with. And that was that was kind of a hard switch from, you know, kind of a, a mental switch to make between, you know, I had this plan in mind and this is what I wanted to create, and then trying to force that to happen instead of, I guess, letting go and sitting back and saying, how can I complete this in a way that I would like it to turn out? Or or perhaps to, um, don't know how else to say it. But basically, it, it took a change of thinking, I guess, from make this work, make this work, make this work, to stepping back and saying, how can I just make it good? You know, and, and, and compromising on a, a small thing, I guess, of, I guess, focusing on the wrong thing. Maybe that's part of the deal. Trying to force something by focusing on the wrong aspect. Instead of saying, 
to the compressor that I hate or leave a big awkward space up here that I don't like because it affects the original aesthetics I was going for. So basically the answer is use the space you've got and, and do something cooler with it. And so like I said, doing the light and the laser. So that's kind of the direction that uh, I'm choosing to go now with the jackal. So that's, and just having that conversation, no, not right now, having that conversation and having that uh, revelation, I guess, no, you can't have it right now, you're too noisy, and uh, really made me excited to get back into the project again, and I, I realized, or I guess I had that, like I said, that revelation of, I can make this cool again, instead of being so caught up on the aspect about it that I didn't like, I could now take that that creative energy and put it into something else without really changing the blaster itself, but just changing the way I viewed the blaster and made a big difference in my outlook on the project itself and it's going to be going back on the bench here pretty quick after the holidays and all that. Which leads me to this one again. And forcing the project being able to let go and saying, you know, instead of trying to force this into being something that I think would be cool and just letting it flow into what does the blaster kind of want to be? And at this point, I mean, it's got some nice lines to it. The handguard is coming along really good and this blended in a lot better than I actually uh, originally expected it to. And the flat top turned out better than I was anticipating as well. It's uh. I think I'm going to go with just more of a, it's just a blaster, it doesn't need a, necessarily a secondary firing mode of some kind, which I guess there again is something that, trying to change the way I think about things, instead of saying an integration is X blaster, X stock, and then something master keyed on the front, instead of, I, I'm trying to work at throwing out that recipe, which it's a good recipe, but there's so much more beyond that, and there's nothing wrong with making something that's you know, in the sense, just a demolisher, just a flywheel blaster that looks really cool or is really comfortable or something like that. And so that's the direction I'm moving with this and just going to go with a, at this point I don't really have a plan, but I'm probably just going to take, carry this line forward with scratch building or something else and just finishing off kind of the muzzle area, maybe putting a muzzle brake or something on. And I might even just, uh, I've removed too much material to go with just like a, a Jace 3D kind of foregrip thing, so I might have to, uh, build something or modify something else, but I think I might just go with just kind of a standard foregrip and go with just kind of a, kind of a, it's a bit large for an SMG thing or whatever, but just kind of a, just go with kind of a basic rifle platform. And there again, it, liberating yourself from a, an old idea and being able to say, you know what, I originally intended this to do X, Y, and Z, and now I needed to do QRS, so to speak. It's it's really liberating. You can you can really sit back and look at this with fresh eyes instead of instead of uh, you know having having the vision of this needs to be this way because that's what I've thought originally. Being able to step back, it, it allows your 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 creative juices, so to speak, to think a little clearer instead of being caught up with old ideas. Being able to to look at an old project, and I've had this kicking around for yeah, it's like a year and a half or so, and. Because I was hung up on that one aspect, it, it prevented me from moving on with the project. And that became... Stop it. It, it made the, the project stagnate a little bit, which isn't really good. And so I've elected to just say, this is where it is right now. I can build this and finish it and move on. And then if I decide later on down the road to build something else with the underbarrel thing, then, you know, we'll take it as it comes, but because I'm moving on past, like I said, that old recipe, and letting blasters kind of create themselves, being able to, to instead of saying, here's these blasters, fit inside this mold that I've created, start putting things together and feel free to change your mind and add things and, and take away things from, from whatever project you're working on, and just let a project flow. There's, like I said, that one has had several different muzzle setups and several different uh, underbarreled things. 
but instead of uh, focusing on stick to this recipe, exchange this piece for this piece, being able to just step back and say, let's just see what it what happens. And maybe I'm the only one that suffers from that. I, I don't know, but like uh, with my car, uh, I've got a '60 Studebaker Lark that I'd been looking for one for a long time, and my idea was to get one with the inline six. It was a, a little Champion six. I was going to put uh, electronic ignition, a little turbo on it. It was going to be my little uh, co commuter car. It was supposed to get good gas mileage, and it was going to be great. And I had this image in my head. But when I got my car, finally found one. It was a V8 car, and I was like, okay, well, that's not so bad. V8's going to be kind of cool for a while until I can find the, the six and build up the six and put it in. And as I worked on the car, the car was just kind of like, no, 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 we're going to go in this other direction. Instead of going with a three-speed overdrive that I was originally going to do, there again for the economy and stuff like that, then it said, no, you need to go to four-speed. We're going to do a four-speed. It's going to be good. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, let's do that. And I, I, it, it, sound, it sounds dumb, and it probably is. But I'm happier with the car as it's progressed, naturally just by the way parts have interacted with each other in the course of building it instead of starting with a shell and saying here's here's this idea I'm going to implant in here I might do that again later I don't know but by the time I get another car to build that version it might want to go in a different direction as well but I know I'm happier letting the project develop as as its personality develops as you create it and the same thing goes with with these blasters and stuff instead of forcing things into a mold just start putting pieces together and see how the blaster itself comes out or again, it probably sounds ridiculous, and it probably is. And I don't know if anybody else is having the problem that I had, as far as the being able to step away from the project and, and have kind of a clear thought pattern or whatever. But anyway, that was just kind of uh, some modding from the heart, so to speak, I guess. And, uh... Excuse you. But anyway, yeah. We'll go from there and... Do you guys like this uh, this format? I mean, I would have uh, I would have probably done a, a top down kind of the standard format for talking about this, but for more uh, like I said from the heart kind of things, I like talking to you guys directly because even though I'm, I I can't really see you, you guys can't really necessarily see me, but at least there's a connection there, and it makes it a lot easier to talk about this way, at least for me. So if you like this uh, this format, I've got some other things that I kind of like to talk to to you guys about. Uh, more from the heart, kind of more, uh, I don't know, different subjects like that. But if you guys are interested in that, let me know and I'll see about doing this a little bit more. And uh, until next time, wishing blue skies and green lights to you and yours, and may all your troubles be teeny weeny ones.